The last two properties that we need to talk about are the identity properties and the inverse properties. So first of all, let's tackle the identity properties. And just think about what the word identity means. You know, your identity doesn't change just because you're wearing different clothes or you're, uh, you know, at work or at home or whatever. You know, your identity stays the same. Well, that's a lot the way that the identity property works. The identity for addition is what you would add to something and it doesn't change. So for addition that would be zero because whatever you add to zero that number doesn't change. It doesn't affect its identity. So saying something like 5 plus 0 would equal 5. So 0 is called the identity for, multiple, for addition. Now we also have an identity for multiplication. That would be, you know, what do you multiply to a number so that it does not change? And that would be a 1 because anything times 1 is itself. So an example would be 5 times 1 is 5. So 1 is called the identity for multiplication. And um, those are very important words, identity. You really need to know that for things that you're going to do later on in your math classes. Um, the next property is the inverses. And we have to talk about identities before we talk about inverses because inverses are what you do to get the identity. So for addition, the additive inverse or the inverse for addition would be what you would add to a number to get the identity. Well, if the identity is zero, then you're saying what do you have to add to a number to get zero? And that would be its opposite. So, or it's, you know, the opposite sign. So uh, a number example for that uh, would be, say, if our number was 5. What would we have to add to 5 to get 0? Well, that would be a negative 5, the opposite. Under multiplication, for uh, multipl multiplicative inverses, you're trying to get the identity, which is 1. So in order to get that, we have to look at what do we multiply to a number to get 1. So if we started out with our 5, we'd have to say 5 times what would give us 1, and that would be 1 fifth. We call multiplicative inverses reciprocals. That's another word for them. Alright, last thing we're going to do here says name the properties illustrated by each true statement. So each one of these statements is absolutely true, but we're trying to figure out which one of the properties um, is, it talks about. Here we have x plus 9 plus 3 equals 9 plus x plus 3. Now it might be very, very tempting to say this is the associative property just because it has three items. But look at it very carefully. Whenever we look at these, look at these x plus 9 and over here we have 9 plus x. For this, the order has changed. So which property was it that talked about the order actually changing? That was the commutative property. And because we're dealing with addition here, this would be called the commutative property of addition. Our next one says 1 times 9 equals 9. This is dealing with whatever our number is, we're multiplying it to something and it doesn't change. That's dealing with identities. So this is the multiplicative property of 1, or another way of saying that is the multiplicative identity. Our next one says 4 times y times 9 equals 4 times y times 9. Well, here we have three items, so we sh probably should be thinking associative property automatically. They are in the same order. The order did not change, but they are being regrouped or reassociated. So this would be the associative property, and because we're dealing with multiplication, it would be of multiplication. The last one says 6 times 1 sixth equals 1. These are reciprocals of each other that we are multiplying together to get the identity. So this would be called multiplicative inverses.